to your 2019 Rogers Cup presented by National Bank. Our players for this quarterfinal match are on their way to... Sunny conditions in Toronto. It's been a pretty windy yeah, on this Friday, still a little tonight. bit so. So we play with the uh, same condition as in previous match. We still have Okai TV changeovers, net machine, shot clock, one corner, this corner. You have any questions? So heads gonna be WTA. WTA heads, this one tells. Heads. Heads. Serve. Can you stay for the picture with the kid facing that way? So the uh, picture is done and dusted and the warm-up about to start in this encounter. It is a quarterfinal in Toronto between Serena Williams and Naomi Osaka. So not just any quarterfinal. And uh, when the draw came out, these two paired in the same section. I think people were looking ahead and thinking, yeah, we could get this rematch. Close to having one at the Australian Open earlier in the campaign. But uh, Carolina, Carolina Pliskova rallied to beat Serena in their quarterfinal in Melbourne. There's a confirmation that it is Kenan and Andreescu in one semifinal. And he will be in the other semifinal. Great to have uh, Naomi Cavaday alongside myself, Ravi Uba, for this one. Naomi, last year, obviously, many, many people watched that final at the U.S. Open. Mainly what happened, there was Carlos Ramos, who gave a warning to Serena for, for coaching. That began things. She, she had an exchange with the chair empire. And then the crowd, very, very raucous at one stage. There were jeers. There were tears at the end for Osaka. As she won her first Grand Slam title, what were your rec recollections of that evening? Well, I mean, the intensity, I think Gia's is a bit of an understatement. The crowd were, uh, you yeah, know, very strongly booing. And that was directed at Naomi, which uh, was uh, not really on. Because, you know, whatever you think about um, Serena's behaviour in that match, none of it was directed at Naomi at all. So uh, it was uh, a completely separate issue. But of course, Naomi was involved because she was on the court. And my biggest takeaway from that was really just how well Naomi dealt with that situation, the in intensity of it all through the match, just the match alone. Uh, you know, afterwards, I think things were, were pretty tough for her. But uh, again, just dealing with things really well. And and in terms of 
her mentality. Look, she's been struggling a little bit this year. She's talked about that. No one can, you can't say that there's no one as resilient as, uh, as Naomi Osaka. She's absolutely extraordinary. What she did in that final was the most resilient thing you, you could imagine. There was so much going on. It was a complete circus. So she will be able to bounce back. She is bouncing back. And it's not really like she's gone anywhere. She's still winning matches. She's just not reaching or meeting her own high standards. But that showed a lot about her and her character. Yeah, and uh, adding the uh, Grand Slam title at the Australian Open. Another momentous uh, achievement for Osaka, who is at uh, 21 years of age. Her record uh, this campaign now 24 and 8, besides winning at the Australian Open. Semi-finalist in uh, Brisbane. As uh, Serena gets another introduction, the fans uh, boy, have been right behind her in uh, Toronto. She's won all three of her Rogers Cup titles Serena, in this city. We're going back to Serena for for. Naomi for a second. She's also made the fourth round in Indian Wells as the uh, defending champion. Lost to Shea Suwei in Miami in the third round. She actually beat Shea at the Australian Open en route to the uh, title. Had a pretty good clay court swing prior to the French Open. There were some injury issues, then lost early there and also Wimbledon. She's saying this week that uh, if she could delete the clay court season and the grass court season, she would uh, do so. Uh, just wants to put it behind her. But obviously somebody who made it very clear that she is so keen to learn on those surfaces. And now she's back on the hard courts where she has this uh, that is tr tremendous record. Yeah, and it's it's just a little more comfortable for her, I think. She's just less experience on the, on the, the clay and, and the grass. And I, I think uh, she has such a, a, a stellar record on this surface. And, and I do think that that will be a big part of her. Uh, uh, gaining the confidence and momentum, getting the matches as well, the wins, and, and pushing forward. And speaking of getting matches, that's something Serena talked about at Wimbledon. She wanted to get more matches under her belt, and she kind of hinted at Wimbledon after she lost that final to Simone Halep that uh, she was going to be playing uh, at the Rogers Cup. It's the first time back since 2015. She also plans to play in uh, Cincinnati. And her season affected by that knee injury, she did very well just to play at the uh, French Open, but it clearly hindered. And actually, it was uh, Kennan who beat her at Roland Garros. Started to uh, play once again after getting treatment on the knee. The week of Birmingham on the grass. She didn't play that event, but that's when she started to uh, get ready for Wimbledon. And that went all the way to the final. Where Halep only dropped, uh, only made three unforced errors in that final. I mean, what a tremendous performance it was for Halep. As you look at the... Uh, rankings in the, the singles it'll be changing next week because osaka will be the new number one she'll be going back to number one ashley barty was there kind of was the player to be her carolina pushkova beaten in three sets today by bianca andreescu who has won all of her matches this week in uh, three sets sure has been dramatic stuff in her encounters and the home fans have been really really rooting her on do you think Naomi, this is the type of test that Serena would have been looking for when she decided, yeah, I'm going to play the Rogers Cup? I, I, I think so. I, I think she is relishing it because you know, she's done so well in the slams getting back to the finals, and she's pretty clear that that is her main focus, is to win some more grand slams. She's got back to the finals relatively consistently and is, is of course, there and always in the mix for winning, but... There's been one player lurking that has just been able to produce that extra level. So the, the more time she gets to play against those sorts of players that are capable of that, the better. So this uh, quarterfinal about to start at the Rogers Cup between Serena Williams and Naomi Osaka. It will be Serena Williams to start against Naomi Osaka. And it is a good start for Serena, who has said this week she's been very happy with her movement. There's her husband, Alexis. Thank you. 
Let's go, Bianca. Somebody from the crowd had to say it. Yeah, I think the biggest question in terms of trying to guess what's going to happen in this match is quite tough because it's difficult to know the sort of Serena that's going to turn up. I think we've got a fairly good idea as to what Osaka's going to bring. Just uh, pulled off a little on that backhand, so an opening for Osaka in this first game. Serena's first match, I thought she looked great, actually, against Elise Mertens. Right from the beginning, she was dialed in, she was roaring, she was sprinting around the place. She said it was sluggish. I will dis I will respectfully disagree. She was being harsh <laughs> on herself, and she is a perfectionist like uh, Osaka. Handled that uh, miss hit very nicely, Serena. And then in the second round, a very different opponent playing Alexandra. Very, well, it's the third round of the tournament, her second match. But, uh, didn't get a lot of rhythm, really threw her off. It was a bit blustery and it felt like it was um, not as good as a performance as the first round. Just in terms of the level that she was able to produce, I think mentally it was very strong. Yeah. She's uh, fallen behind by early breaks in all four of her sets so far this week. Certainly hoping to avoid that in this one. And it is a hole to start indeed. She was uh, saying in a press conference yesterday that the areas of her game that she really wanted to try and uh, work on the serve and the return. You touched on it, the fact that she felt that Alexandrova didn't give her much rhythm in the encounter yesterday. And we saw her looking at times a bit frustrated on the baseline, more so than what happened against Mertens. Yeah, definitely. She started off quite slowly with her serve and it kind of built up through the match. And we see her do that quite often. It just took a, a little while to get going, hence the early breaks. Court taking it wide. It is the uh, third time they've faced off, but uh, Osaka was saying every time she faces Serena, it is kind of like a once in a lifetime opportunity. Her idol, also called her tennis mom. The one area that is actually better for Williams in this matchup than it was against Alexandrova is that she will get more rhythm. There is there's a bit more variation with the Alexandrova game. Just in terms of the injections of pace, yeah. it just the timing's just never quite the same. Osaka just a bit more rhythm to it. It's a very hard yes. strike. It's coming at you. I'm not saying it's easy. Harder than Alexander was. Even, yes. As even as hard as she hits the ball. It's more powerful, absolutely. So that brings other difficulties. But that is one thing that Williams likes is with them. And really, I mean, she can deal with any level of pace. So that won't bother her too much that Osaka hits the ball bigger than Alexandra, as long as she can get her rhythm. So, uh, kind of smooth holds to start for both players. 
There are plenty of things in the Osaka game that will bother her. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> some uh, nice uh, puffy white clouds. Had some rain earlier in the week in uh, Toronto, but uh, don't expect any issues with that this evening. And also looking uh, good going forward. And with a chance because uh, Serena perhaps not getting the depth that she was looking for initially off that strike. The first matchup, uh, by the way, was in Miami 2018. That was just after Osaka won in Indian Wells. And straight away had to face Serena. It was 6-2, uh, 6, two, six four. Serena was very fresh of coming back. It was uh, still kind of working her way in. Late call, but uh, no challenge. Good serve, right into the body. That was interesting, actually, because it, it, it swung more than Osaka was anticipating. She actually moved to the ball, and then it jammed her up in the body. So she got that one wrong. Nice put away after Osaka just guessed on that serve. So it has been a, a smooth start for both on serve. Serena leading 2 1. Time. Both players uh, were looking forward to this matchup. Serena saying, indeed, that uh, she has been looking forward for a while to take on Osaka once again. And Osaka saying, yep, she wants to show Serena what she can do. Initially, a nice pickup right on the uh, return, off the return from Osaka, but the backhand string. Well, the big question I said at the beginning of this match really was how is Serena going to turn up? Well, she is already clearly dialed in, serving at a nice pace, looks focused. And I know that sounds obvious, but. In the previous match, that wasn't the case. She was very distracted, a bit, bit all over the place, range not quite there right from the beginning, very slow serving. So, different start here. That's just super hitting from Serena. And she actually just didn't, she didn't just blast that one, which I thought she was going to. She set up and just thought, no, I'm just going to guide this one past Osaka. Fair bit of spin on that forehand. A bit more time taken by Osaka before this point at left 30. <laughs> Didn't miss it uh, by much. Charampart in this one 
Pierre Bucky. Well, that serve really helped Osaka yesterday, in particular in the first set against the 18-year-old Paul Igasviatek. It seemed like she was down that entire first set. She actually was down a break, 4-2, and then face set points at 4-5 and 5-6, both times coming up with big serves. Had to be so alert again off the return. Yeah, I was going back through it earlier, actually, and counting them up. And every single big point on the Osaka serve, barring one, and I'm, I'm talking even slightly medium points through the sets, but the ones that are kind of crucial to the further match, she made the first serve. And it was very effective. And we're nine aces in total for it yesterday. Still looking for the first one today, but that is a big hold early from Love 30. And she said that she felt like the difference between her and Sweetie was maybe just a bit of experience in the big points. That's what she's talking about, just mm. understanding how to execute her best serve under pressure time after time. Something Serena has done <laughs> over the years. <laughs> That swing her into the body is causing some issues for Osaka already. See, it's still a bit blustery. Uh, yeah, you were mentioning it, uh, Naomi talking about the serve early. The last couple of matches this has been the best start in that regard for Serena. Net cord for Osaka to attack. Second chance of that rally did uh, Osaka. Couldn't take advantage. She's been uh, digging out those types of balls this week. Confirmation of the fact that she is feeling good moving around the court, but uh, the pressure unrelenting from Osaka. Yeah, still showing some good movement. The recovery from that forehand out wide was excellent. Too good for Osaka just in the end there. A fine get in the forehand corner as well. And this match has started very nicely indeed. We're moving along in the first set. 3 2. Oh, my God. 
Magic Stone Pig Pizza. Don't forget Toronto. There's no bacon. Stone bacon. Approaching 7.30 local time in uh, Toronto. First of the uh, matches in the night session. Features Serena Williams and Naomi Osaka. Good start made by both players. Serena so far, her numbers, uh, six winners, three on fourth. We've seen a few of those this week. Those types of returns. It's a tough one against Serena for that sort of serve because, like Osaka did there, you're so used to actually taking the pace off to really get the swing away. But with Serena, I mean, she's so good at lunging out there and her reach is so much. It's, it's quite a dangerous thing to do. You could see the serve from Osaka on that first point just wasn't quite wide enough. Now wind really starting to pick up now. To that return. Coach there on the uh, left of Osaka, Jermaine Jenkins, whose brother Jermir is the hitting partner of Serena. So here come the first two break chances, and they go to Williams. Yeah, the serving of Osaka has, it might be because of the wind. She's not sure of the ball toss, but uh, it's not pacey enough. It's not placed well enough. It's, they've all been in the slot in this game. So first serve. 30, 40. Might Serena feel she could have done better with that return? Yeah, I felt like that serve again was quite in the slot. A little bit of swing on it, so it wasn't the easiest of returns. Yeah, that's where the wind uh, may have been a factor on that backhand. Just out in front. Yeah, you're saying it's so windy, right? <laughs> yeah, we're with you. Oh, well, that's a pity because she did so well on the return. And they're both laughing. I mean, I think... Yeah. <laughs> well, the fact that Osaka went right back to Serena in the corner there, it's because you know, it's much higher risk going down the line. You have to be in such a good position to try and hit that space. And I just don't think she was going to trust it with the ball swirling and could have very easily been in an enforced error. Just love that from Serena. Two hands. I mean, she's just completely reaching. It's it's the absolute maximum she can reach without falling over, and she can still produce that sort of pace. It's 
it's definitely Williams doing the majority of the work here. So second consecutive game where she comes through after being really tested there, Osaka, 3-0. Three well, the parents of uh, Bianca Andreescu looking on right at the top. I think that's her, her dog as well, Coco. Serena, a uh, dog lover as well. Saka's just playing through the middle. She's not happy about the wind, and it's working. And actually, you mentioned in the last game that Williams is the one doing the majority of the work. Well, actually, it's probably good for Osaka in these sorts of conditions. Race number four. The thing is, is, is when it's windy, you're just more likely to get something wrong in your setup or your contact or your swing because you're just kind of having to fight the whole time. Or your ball toss. <laughs> <laughs> and if you go down the middle of the court, you're going over the lowest part of the net, the biggest part of the court. So you know, your risk is just lower. So if you do get something wrong, you've still got a good chance of it going in and being all right. So pretty windy yesterday. Against Alexandra. Serena had her hair down, then went with a bun after three games. Whereas they termed it at Wimbledon the, the business bunch used it against Allison Risk on a windy day. The third set. And went on to win. Seventy percent first serves in for Serena so far. Serena's got the wind behind her right now. Just held up that particular shot. It's taken a few of her shots just over the baseline as well. Teddy, but also with uh, a lot of spin. She gets out to 4 3 in this first set.
She's been uh, doing a bit of uh, sightseeing in Toronto, though mostly sticking to the uh, tennis uh, soccer. Visited one of the main streets in Toronto, Queen Street. Call coming from the chair. Meanwhile, Serena's been uh, to the aquarium with daughter Olympia. City she knows pretty well. Won three titles in Canada in Toronto. All of them coming in Toronto and making a good start in this one. Yeah, she's really getting on the uh, Osaka serves, particularly the second serves. But even some of the firsts in the, the last service game, it's just a bit tentative. I'm sure it's to do with the conditions. It's understandable. Do these, do these conditions favor either player? Um, no, I, no, not not particularly in their game styles. There's nothing technically that is exposed because of the wind. Ooh. It's just about the attitude towards it and how they're handling it, and they're both taking it in very differently. Serena seems to be just getting on with her normal game plan; hasn't changed anything just yet, so it doesn't seem to be too disrupted. Osaka basically spent the last two games just hitting everything in the middle of the court. Been pretty noticeable, hasn't it? Very few balls that Osaka is catching cleanly, and her balls usually go through the court. We notice that. Not yet. Yeah, and she's she's taking pace off. The serve is slow, first and second now. As I say, there was another one there that Serena getting on top of, and now from the back of the court as well, the pace is coming off. Well, here's a, a third consecutive game where she's behind in the score. It was love thirty, and then she had to save a couple of break points last time around. You'll have to save a couple more, at least. First double in this match. She can't save that one. And Williams is the first to break through. And in truth, she has, she has been uh, knocking on the door. Yeah, the pressure has been on Osaka every single game, really. Felt like it was only a matter of time. I think Osaka's got to just put a bit more on her shots. Even if she stays playing down the middle... She can pick safer targets, but still hit through the shot. She's kind of not, not going for either. She's not really being too aggressive or going for any risk at all. It's just a bit too safe. Yeah, you look at her uh, winner's count. One. One winner so far for Osaka. There's number two. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, thank you. you can see she was also moving through that shot with her body, kind of walking forwards after she hit it. I mean, she knew it was a winner, but make good use of the hip there to get the power. Yeah, that was uh, one of the few times where she's taking the ball right up on the baseline, if not just a little bit inside. I think she uh, thought about maybe stopping for a second and challenging Osaka. Not that deep serve, but uh, didn't do so. Jenkins uh, coming in this season after Osaka cut ties with Sasha Bain. Oh, 
she did well enough to take it early and just slam it away because it's the sort of shot that if you hesitate for a second in this sort of wind, it can just it will hang there and the wind could take it away from you. Yeah, that ball flies on Osaka. Set point for Serena after it was love 30 in this game. Serena Williams takes the opening set, and it's the first set she has won against Naomi Osaka. So, so sharp in the first set. 6-3. Okay. So here's the thing. Like, 3-2 in the first set. I felt like you took off your serve, you know? You let, you let off a little bit, and you just kind of threw it in there, and then, you know, she's blasted it, you know? So you got it. The first. You got to keep going after it, you know? I mean, you're going to have to, you know, keep accelerating going after the second serve, you know, unless she's just going to, you know, blast away. But overall, you got to make higher first serve percentage, you know. Um, you're doing great besides that, Naomi. You're still in this. Keep her moving, you know. Like, you're going to get some openings on her service games, all right. When you, when you dig your teeth into her service games, you got to keep her moving, all right. Um, Lock in and let's just stay focused here. All right. Just kind of hard to me for you. Yeah, on the second serve returns, yeah, go for the middle. But once you dig your teeth into the point, and once you get your chance, you got to keep her moving. Yeah, you got to open it up and keep her moving. Okay. Cool. Yeah. You having fun? All right. Come on. You can do this, Naomi. Let's go. Osaka out to serve to begin the second set against uh, Serena Williams. Just had a chat with her coach, Jermaine Jenkins. You know, just on that point again, we've talked about it this whole week with Serena, how well she's moving easily the best. We feel she's, she's moved the entire season. Yeah, particularly the recovery. She's, uh, she has been very fast and strong out to the shots, but then she has been falling behind in rallies. But this movement is the, the best it's been since she's come back from having her baby. The knee better. And also she said that uh, she's worked on her fitness. Didn't miss by much. That was uh, a let off. And, I mean, what did you take out of uh, Osaka's conversation with Jenkins? Yeah, I picked up on a couple of things that we'd been saying as well. It was quite clear that she'd taken some pace off the first serve. He was saying, you've got to keep going for it. Osaka said that she had taken it off because she wanted to make the second serves. Sorry, because she was trying to make the first serves to avoid hitting mm. second serves yep. because Serena's annihilating the second. Yep. So she said, do I... Are you sure you want me to keep going for it? Speaking of crushing second serves. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, for me, 
you're playing Serena, and that, that, that's what's going to happen. Mm. You, you have to serve well first and second. You have to execute everything to such a high level. There is no wiggle room. You can't play comfortably mm. against Serena when she's locked in like this. And it was a similar conversation from when they were talking about the back of the court. Mm -hmm. say, he was saying, going too central, and she said, well, yeah, because... You know, I don't want to miss because in this wind it's difficult. Well, I mean, you, you can't play Serena and trying not to miss. It's not going to work. Uh, she didn't do that in New York nor in Miami. No, absolutely not. Oh uh, some chances in this game for Serena. Perhaps she might have broken already. Yeah, it's just it's something that you know, it's not a part of Naomi's game. She is an aggressive, big striker, likes to dictate. But it's clear that the wind has got into her mind and has, has changed almost every aspect of her game. So she needs to just settle down, get back to what she does well. She needed that hold, Osaka, and gets it to begin set number two. It's always an interesting battle that uh, all players have on the court, which is about the way they want things to be and the, what the requirements are on the court. So because it's windy, Naomi wants to be able to play through the middle of the court a little more because she doesn't want to hit too many errors. You see 11 unforced errors there, so touch high considering she only hit two winners. She really wasn't going for it at all. Very nice numbers for Serena. She'll be chuffed with those. But the requirements of playing Serena Williams mean that you have to move her to the corner. You have to do what her coach was saying. And it, there's, there's always this ongoing battle about the way you want a match to be going and the way it is. As I say, similarly on that serve, you know, she wants to take a bit of pace off because she wants to make some first serves. Well, that's not, <laughs> that's yeah. not you can't it, do it. It's a trade-off that you probably can make. Yeah, you, you just can't afford it, not yeah. with Serena playing like this. The challenge it was by Osaka. And look, I, I, I sympathize with her. I can understand. It's blustery. It's, she wants to kind of get work her way into the rallies, wait for the opportunities. And, you know, I, I get it. It's just that the, the challenge in front of her is, is quite particular and quite demanding. Dribbles over to her relief. Thank you. But she set up the point nicely with that serve. Wow, look at that. 2% of shots from Osaka inside the baseline. That probably equates to one. That's probably the one winner she hit into the corner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the forehand. Actually, it was, wasn't it? She yeah. was inside yeah, the that, court. That was very noticeable because you know, she'd been lingering a bit behind the baseline. That's just not her usual game. Well, I think uh, Jenkins, right at the end of the conversation, asked the question to her, are you having fun? And Osaka said yes. And that, that was very, very nice to hear because she talked about it prior to Toronto, about how she was relearning to have fun after what has been Pretty difficult last couple of months for her. Well, she put a lot of pressure on herself at the French Open. She was, she admittedly thought about the calendar year Grand Slam. She really wanted to do it. And when she didn't. She was a little down, but then came out of that, realizing, you know what? Hasn't been done a long time since 1988, so... Um, 
should have expected that much, perhaps. Yeah, see, for me, I, I, I see it a little differently. I, I don't think it's about relearning to have fun. I, I think it's learning from scratch to have fun in this new situation. Because you know what? Your ranking moving up week after week, winning five matches a week, that's a lot of fun. Each week you check the rankings on the Monday, you were 60, now you're 40, then you're 32, now you're seeded mm. at Wimbledon. It's all new, then you beat a top 10 player yeah. and you go to the Rogers Cup for the first time. Yeah, whatever it is, it's that's a lot of fun, right? But it's, a, it's also perspective, because actually, interesting you say that, she was talking about it last week about facing pressure at different stages of her career when she was just starting out, lower down in the rankings house, she had the pressure because she wanted to, you know, win matches, prize money, help her family out. But then when she got to number one, she wanted to live up to that, number one. So there always is that. Can sometimes take, take the fun out of it. So it's adapting to your new environment, isn't it? And very different being the world number one. You have to find new ways to have fun mm -hmm. in your life and out on the court. It's it's totally different. The last thing, just on this note, is, is she was reflecting and saying, you know, what if I couldn't play tomorrow? How would I feel? She said that would feel terrible. She loves tennis, and she. That's what she's taking with her. Yeah, no, she's she's done. She, she's doing well, as I say, to, to get herself out of the, the, the difficult mental stage that she's been at. But that it is it's just a lot less fun being where she is now uh, with the exception of winning the grand slams which she has now realized and she's back to number one yeah <laughs> which she has now realized is going to be potentially harder than she thought even she thought she was going to win the calendar kind of slam what she wanted to williams with three break chances to go up by a set and a break Williams moving there into the corner. Oh. Only your second uh, service game of this set, but the first serve percentage for Osaka just under 50. They traded cross-court backhands until Serena opened it up and she puts it away. Just a continuation of what we've seen so far. Williams now leading by a set and 2-1.
time. The evening sky in uh, Toronto. Uh, under that sky at the Aviva Center, Serena Williams has a set and break lead over at Naomi Osaka. She's uh, played a superb match uh, thus far. <laughs> Yet to face a break point. Just noticeable in the corners how well she's moving. What a drive that was. Well, he likes it. Yeah, it's looking great, isn't it? I mean, still not the penetration from Osaka that we're used to off the backhand cross, but Serena looking very good. That's a pretty telling uh, statistic. Saw Serena just uh, apologizing to Osaka for the delay, and Osaka saying no problem. It was a couple of weeks ago where Serena wrote that essay. Harper's uh, Bizarre Magazine wrote a letter to Osaka saying that her heart was uh, broken, that during that time at the U.S. Open, she was unable to, to bask in that title, Osaka, after what had happened. And the words she actually used were, I am truly sorry. Signed off that letter. Your fan, comma, Serena. Second uh, double. And Osaka's reply was, no one has stood up for, well, for people, for themselves. The way you have, and uh, you need to continue trailblazing. How is that for a second serve? 14, 15. Yeah, confidence is rolling now, isn't it? Shoulders back, nice and relaxed. as well Williams. backs up the break Williams lead three games to one Osaka's just got to go for it here this is all gone Serena's way even if she makes some errors it's fine I mean, she's got to try and do something, take control. Still another steady serve, though, from Osaka. She's had uh, so much success at this event, Williams. 
no one has uh, won more in terms of matches 32 times tied with Arancha Sanchez Vicario and looks like she's on the way to eclipsing that As so often is the case, this match really is up to Serena. Just surprised at, at how little effect Osaka has been able to have on the match. Two winners in total. backhand slice when she moved out wide there Osaka I mean, she'd normally rip that with two hands she was ripping it yesterday she was there yeah. she was behind it yeah this is totally different to what we saw in her match yesterday and she was up against it I mean, great mm. player it was a high quality match between her and Suyatek yep but, oh be careful Serena Hopefully she is okay. She said, uh, I'll be all right. And she's out of chair because the game ended. It is game indeed to Osaka. Well, it was some drop shot. <laughs> well, it shows you that the wind is uh, definitely getting involved. I'm just... I surprised that Serena did that it's it's so dangerous Serena Williams back out to serve midway in the second set with a break lead 3-2. said uh, she'd be all right after chasing that drop shot first of all to get there again just proves how well she is moving but her her right forearm into the net post yeah, I'm just very surprised that she committed to it that much and actually put herself at risk because you know, players know you, know you get within a meter of that net post you stop running You've got the umpire's chair there as well. It's, it's not worth it.
And, you know, those types of incidents uh, can sometimes jolt the player. They can think about that just for a little bit, take the uh, concentration off. Very few times where she lets rip from the baseline. And it looked like another one of the points that we'd seen so far. Just getting the ball back in, falling a little centrally and a, a bit short. Like Serena maybe could have capitalized on the last one, but then pulling the trigger, getting something going. First come on from Osaka. shot not really you would say in a repertoire well the one where Williams crashed into the net I mean it ended up being a, an amazing shot but it was a very bizarre bailout sort of shot it really had no right for it to work it, it should have ended up like that mm. one but the wind got involved and you could argue that was Naomi's plan I don't think it was And after she had just ripped that forehand winner. Yeah, exactly, right? She plays the point, and it's, yes, that's the way. That's the right thing to do. Do it again, and then, yeah, very strange. Turn around this deficit to earn a game point. one of the few times it felt like in this match where just the feet weren't moving there off that ball that bounced up high. was maybe worth a challenge you know three two down second set it's juice it's, a, it's an important time if there was even a, sort of Small a chance to go for it The stats for Serena are pretty outstanding for these conditions. 23 winners, 17 unforced errors, so doing in incredibly well. A lot of that is to do with the fact that Osaka has not been putting her under a huge amount of pressure, though. Well, look at the depth into the corner from Serena before she approached. Such nice early preparation throughout that rally from Williams. He's got to be happy, Patrick, with the performance. Williams means Williams. I 
Four two now. So Naomi at this stage, four two in the second set. Touched on some of the things you felt Osaka could do. Anything different now? Does she just have to just completely go for broke? Sure, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Serena's rolling. She's not really been in this match much. Got to just, just have a swing almost. And I know that's a bit of a throwaway thing to say, but she can't just keep doing this. It's, it's difficult because it is it's an understandable situation because Serena's moving better than we've seen her in some time which is when she has got a good strike in it's been neutralizing that or hitting a winner off it so that's been tough to deal with the wind she struggled with that and I don't think she's known quite what to do with it because she just she took a lot of pace off early on and, and she struggled to find it again and so there's a lot about this match that is really difficult for her, but it's just, um, as I say, at this stage now, you've just got to just gotta go for it, really. And it's on the back foot once again there, Osaka. There we go. Yeah, the first strike in early as well. First shot. Even if she were to go straight through the middle of the court, it doesn't matter. Do it like that. That's two game points. Now, there have been many players over the course of Serena's career that have beaten her three times in a row. Sanchez, Vicario, Venus, Justine, Anna, Martina, Hingis, Dementieva, and Elise Corne. Yeah. Osaka is going to have to come back if she wants to do it. And that was uh, an important, real pivotal hold for Osaka. Keep the second set close. 4-3.
Serena Williams serving with new balls at the Rogers Cup, a tournament she first played back in uh, 2000. Better on the forehand there, Osaka getting the body through the back of the ball. And that's also quite helpful. You don't want to just rely on your arm to do everything to get the power, the spin, the control, the direction. If you can send your body down the court and get your power with your hip, then you can rely on your, your arm and your forearm to, to get that spin and direction. And it complements quite well. Well, that uh, miscue gives Osaka an opportunity. First serve comes out, and as she has done this week, putting a lot of points behind the first serve. So far this evening, 81%. Hammering down ace number eight. Yeah, she's hit a lot of the swingers out wide, and what a perfect time to go down the tee. I'm not surprised Osaka was just caught stuck and flat footed there. How about that? For some serving for 15 30. You know, we talked about Osaka in the previous match and how well she served under pressure and you were the one who said it, Ravi. There's never been anyone better in the game than Serena at pulling out those serves on big moments. So when you're her opponent, unfortunately, it's no surprise when those aces come past at the most frustrating time. But the thing also, Naomi, is you know, we, we've seen Osaka hit her share of aces. Today, no aces. Well, she's not been going for it. Can't hit aces unless you, you're trying to hit aces. That's, That's much better. I wonder how she'll reflect on this if, in fact, she loses in, uh, in straight sets. Because she said that she really wanted to hit form, hit her peak in New York. Try to find a bit of rhythm here, but obviously she wants to really gear up for the U.S. Open. Cincinnati, of course, uh, next week. I mean, look, this match isn't over yet, but I mean, the, the last match she played against Swiatek I thought was great. Mm. I thought some of the most positive in terms of the, the game that she was putting out on the court, and we had some smiles, and you know, everything kind of looked packaged up quite nicely there, and I think she can definitely take some great confidence from that. She has had chances on the last few Williams mm. service games, though. She, she's been right in them. It's only one break. So she does what she needs to do there. Osaka to hold to stay in this quarterfinal. Coach will have a chat, and uh, they'll try to get a break in the next game. They'll need one to stay in it. 5-4. second serve you know you gotta just go hard through the middle and you gotta like make her play more balls like go, yeah go hard through the middle but 
I felt like you missed some second serve returns. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you got to make that ball in the second serve because that's, sometimes that's your only opening in the game, you know? So you make that ball and step inside the baseline more, okay? Like, when you can, step in more. Like, once you get in the point, step in more, and you got to take a chance to dictate or else she's just going to dictate, you know? All right? I feel it. Huh? I feel it in my bones. You feel it in your bones? Yeah. What does I'm that mean? running so much. Yeah. And by running, I mean lunging all the Yeah. So once you get in the point, you got to find a way to get inside the court, you know? And take a chance. You never know. All right? Here we go. Come on. Uh, you can still do this. It's a rematch of the U.S. Open final, and we could get a rematch of the Wimbledon final if Williams does close it out, and Simona Halep wins later. <laughs> and perhaps uh, those the test that Serena was indeed looking for when she was discussing getting more matches under her belt at Wimbledon. Masaka chatting to Jenkins, just trying to get something maybe that could turn things around and talking specifically about Serena's serve. And he was saying, if you get the opportunity, try and take advantage of those second serve returns. But, well, no second serves. And William said she'd been looking forward to playing Osaka for a while. And what a performance it has been. Three match points. Looking for the ace. <laughs> Might as well win it in glory, right? Yeah, 40 love. <laughs> She's served so brilliantly this evening. 11 aces, that uh, her third double. <laughs> Two of them saved. <laughs> oh, that was a big second serve. <laughs> from 40 love. Mm -hmm. Trying to give his wife encouragement it is Alexis. When she had the chance to carve out the first big chance, the forehand is netted. How is that for a performance in a rematch of last year's U.S. Open Finals? Serena Williams defeats Naomi Osaka. In straight sets, 
Oh, Serena Williams is thrilled to be back on the hard courts and playing some fantastic tennis. She barely put a foot wrong in that match, got to be honest. I know we were talking a lot about the level of Osaka, but what she was up against was a Serena moving better than we've ever seen her before, completely dialed in from point one, which again is, is not always the case, serving great under pressure. It was a fabulous performance from her. And as much as maybe Osaka will feel like she could have done a bit more, the tough conditions, because she was facing that, having to face the wind as well. But still, a smile from Osaka. She said she was enjoying the match and enjoying the battle, an opportunity to play against Serena. You've got to relish that. Nice that uh, Serena parting Osaka off. We can uh, listen in uh, on the interview upcoming with uh, Serena, who must be delighted with that performance. Straight sets, 12 aces for Williams. So, so sharp. Congratulations, Serena, on making it into the semifinals. First question, how's your arm? You ran into the post in that game five in the second set. Um, it burns. <laughs> but, you know, as an athlete, you got to take the hits and keep going. So I just was like, I got to keep going. <laughs> Taking on Naomi Osaka today, you two know each other quite well. She called you her tennis mom. She admires you so much. You were both said you were looking forward to today. Describe the match against her. Well, I'd say more or less tennis grandma. So um, that was very kind of her to say mom. Um, yeah, it was just, it was a better match for me today. You know, just trying to, I, I forgot your question. <laughs> It wasn't that important. Just describe playing against Naomi. You haven't played her since the U.S. Open last year. Yes. Um, yeah, so it was good. We haven't played since New York, which was a, was a really good match for her. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to come out and try to win a set this time because she's beaten me twice. So um, I just wanted to just do the best I could today. You're on to the semifinals. You haven't dropped a set. You said, you know, this is, you're playing injury free. This is the most preparation you've had coming into the Rogers Cup. You wanted to get some matches under your belt before the U.S. Open. Do you feel like your level of tennis is where you want it to be right now? Yeah, I'm getting there. It's definitely not where I want to be, but I'm getting there and I'm getting better. So that's a good thing. Um, I love playing here. So this is a great place to get it better. Um, so. Yeah, I just, I've been in just enjoying my time here. Speaking of playing here, yes, three 